so it's just, it's like yesterday or two days ago, we're talking about this leaked image regarding the P40 Pro from Huawei, their upcoming flagship, their new flagship. We're looking at this profile image, which at the time was called a render, but to me it looked like a marketing image. And, uh, you know, just very little detail, all speculation at that point. And now, what feels like five minutes later, of course it's another day, we have far more detail, and it's coming via an individual on Twitter, here, Yash Raj, and he's got specs. He's got some really interesting specs now for this upcoming device. Uh, that's got it's got me excited, Will. It got me a bit interested. I'm gonna be honest. Now I know we still have the the issues, the ongoing trade dispute, but it feels like it's been alleviated a little bit, or at least it's put on pause a little bit. And you know, Huawei, they're gonna keep working. You know that's what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. They don't know what else to do. And so this is uh, an example of that work. Now, when we looked at the design, what we talked about the last time was the fact that this was going to have a waterfall kind of screen setup similar to the latest Mate series. But now you want to know what got me real excited is a little word in here, a little word graphene. You're a big graphene guy, Will. Futuristic substance. Apparently, the P30 Pro will be the first device to ship with a 5,500 milliamp hour graphene battery. Mm. 5,500 milliamp hour, <clears throat> and it's not an enormous screen by today's standards, so you could imagine some pretty staggering battery life mm -hmm. if it ships with that. The other benefit of graphene is for that capacity, you actually get a smaller footprint. So the actual size of it comparative to a 5,500 milliamp hour traditional battery is 30% smaller. That's compared to a lithium battery. So you get a thinner device with more battery life. You get the best of both because that was always the thing that manufacturers were butting up against is that the customer wants to hold the slim device, particularly now that they're enormous from a screen size perspective, but they don't want to give up the battery life. Mm -hmm. And Apple went ahead and dipped into greater battery life on their latest release. Yeah. Samsung is likely to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. But the devices had to get fatter and heavier because of it. So graphene could be the ultimate solution. And it charges faster. And it charges faster. In fact, this device is going to take advantage of a new 50-watt fast charging technology developed by Huawei. And that's going to allow the device to reach 100% charge in 45 minutes. Mm. So... It's not as crazy as some of the stuff we've seen uh, being announced from other manufacturers, but it's definitely, you know, it's, in, it's on that fringe. It's towards that edge that people are going to be satisfied with. Uh, the other thing that, that comes out from here, it, it was rumored, but it's feeling a little bit more likely now to have it corroborated here, is a 120 hertz display. So as you know, Will, we talked about, we talked about it multiple times here. That's that's becoming the, the the new spec that people care about because you got to go from one spec to the next spec. There's got to be some reason to upgrade. Uh, there's been a, a variety of devices now pushing the refresh rate. 90 hertz, most commonly recently, yeah. with the OnePlus device, Pixel device. Although it kind of it's a bit strange on a Pixel device, you turn the brightness down, and mm -hmm. battery life and and all the rest of it. But I can speak from personal experience. If you haven't used a high refresh rate, display gives it, it gives it more of a performance feel than even some of the spec bumps actually under the hood. Just, mm. just the sort of snappiness associated with that. So that's kind of cool to see as well. Uh, rounding out those specs though, 6.5 inch OLED waterfall QHD plus definition. And you have the latest internal hardware from Huawei as well. It's all outlined in this series of tweets, including the comprehensive camera setup that's going to be on there as well. Uh, this is supposed to come out P40, P40 Pro expected for first quarter 2020, perhaps an official presentation in Barcelona from the 24th to 27th of February. So 
pretty soon. We'll be seeing what's happening. I'm excited to check it out. And we have some more specs now that make me even more excited. I'm a big battery life guy. I, I, I really want to charge as little as possible. Mm -hmm. That's feeling futuristic to me. Do you think it's going to come with Google services? Yes, I believe it will. It will. I believe that, that this okay. thing is on hold for the time being, allowing them to continue to operate. I don't remember the official wording of the hold that was put in place, but they kind of said, okay, American companies can trade in a limited fashion for the time being. So I think I think this one will. We'll see. Mm -hmm. Don't don't uh, don't necessarily hold me to it on that, but I think well, I think it, it'll come out positive on that front, at least for now. Cool. But maybe not. It's possible. Uh, next up, still in the land of leaks. This is a real life S11 leak, or as they say in in the realm. In, in the realm that we exist in, in the wild. <laughs> you know what's weird? It's always these in the hand, in the wild. It's always these. Yeah. You gotta you come up with the, the terms for the segment that no one else would know. <clears throat> if you weren't a nerd, you wouldn't know. Yes. If I was just walking down the street and, 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 and I just strike up a conversation, with somebody. Yeah. And I said, you know what I saw in the wild? I said, like, what? Have you been on a safari? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've been on a safari there, sir? The general public. No, you get, we just get, we get consumed in the, buried in the silo that we create for ourselves here. We got to mm. get, get real every so often. A lot of wonky terms. Yeah, we got to get real every so often. The world is happening. You can't see. You get, uh, you build these walls around yourself, you can't see over the top anymore. You don't know where you stand relative to the environment. Yeah. You gotta know where you stand, Will. Yeah. As a man, 2019, in the I, world. I hear you. Uh, so we have these images, the grainiest of grainy leaks. That's an old school leak. That's a, two, that's a 2011 leak. It's one giant pixel. <laughs> but it looks real to me. And look at that camera cut out, ladies and gentlemen. My goodness. That's a beast. And you know what? I don't care. I don't care anymore. We're not talking, you know. It's, it's the functionality aspect now. Everyone's got a giant camera cu cut out. So who cares? What, what are you going to do? There were the, the, with the memes. Yeah. What is it with memes? What is it with memes? Yeah, do. I mean, do we have to go through that conversation again? I don't know. Do we already go through this conversation? I feel like there's been snippets. I just, I don't know. Are memes overrated or underrated right now? This moment in time. Overrated, underrated. Let's hear it. Oh, I think they're still underrated. I still have a kick. You think they're underrated? Yeah, man, with the Cybertruck. Those Cybertruck memes are pretty funny. Underrated. Memes are underrated right now. I don't okay. know, to me. I always feel like there's always room to grow. Okay, with all the right. Memes. All right, I accept it. What do you think? I don't know. Okay. I don't know. I think memes, as far as providing a laugh, yes, but I think they're getting utilized too much as a complete form of communication. As a complete... Uh, substitute for articulation that when you you use a meme exclusively to communicate or if you lean on memes too heavy it's almost like you sacrifice another muscle hmm. like when it's uh worked into advertising or something and it's not just for the internet nah what i mean is you don't have to look i don't I'm just, I'm trying to think of this on the fly right now. I'm trying to think how I feel about a meme when I see another meme. And maybe I shouldn't just paint with a broad brush because there's obviously a wide variety of memes and I'm sure I could get a kick out of certain memes, but I feel like there's a lot of lazy memes. Yeah, I can agree with that. So that's all I'm, yeah. I don't want to paint with a broad brush. Right. So when I was talking underrated, overrated, I think I was talking about the whole meme landscape. And if you saw any hot memes lately, where you were like, that's that's the thing I'm here for. Yeah. And I feel like I haven't bumped into the hottest. No, eh? 
No, a lot of it's a lot of lazy memes. And repetitive. Repetitive memes. That's the other thing. When once I saw the same meme for the seventh or eighth time, it's I'm slamming my head on the desk. Like our comment section? Yeah, exactly. It's it, it's something about the re meme. Is that a word? It's like a retweet. It's a re meme. You just you 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 saw that it worked and you, you just hit it over again. And that's I think it works a certain number of times. And then at which point the pow the power, the effectiveness yeah. drops off. There's always gonna be that case. I guess that's with everything. Yeah. Anyway, if you got the if you got an actual hot meme, do your thing. Do do your do your dance. Do the dance. You know what? In general. In general, do what you got to do. Anyway, this uh, this is our first real life thing. This is real now. This is happening. Biggest camera cutout ever on a Galaxy device for the S11, S11 Plus. Uh, you're going to just see a tremendous number of cameras in there. That's why you need an enormous cutout. Ice Universe is on board as he would be. It's going to have 108 megapixel main sensor, 5x zoom capabilities. And they're even suggesting it could record video at 8K resolution because we we all have 8, 8K screens, of course. So we definitely need 8K content oh, yeah. for those 8K screens. But who, But I, you know, why not if you can? Mm. You don't have to shoot in 8K, but you have the option to do so. Apparently, there's also going to be a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, as we talked about in the past. This particular story right here is just about the fact that the CADs and the renders are now lining up with a physical device in the wild as the group likes to say this person appears to be taking a picture and working a little bit and how about the individual who took this particular photo my goodness pixel factory from across the food court at the mall he sees this he sees the device with the cutout and the stickers on the back with the case on it to to kind of obscure the picture of what it looks like and he knows he's see that's a hot that's a hot one it's not a meme but that is that is cool that that guy was able to to do that to achieve that mm. that's that's worth re broadcasting in my opinion which is what we're doing which is what 9 to 5 google did and so if you were hoping that for whatever reason, those renders were real or not real, if you were hoping they would line up or not line up, this here is further evidence, maybe even the nail in the coffin, as they say, that the next uh, Galaxy S flagship, the S11, is going to be the camera giant of the world for the time being, and probably push us continually, Will, into a universe in which our smartphones have full-on DSLRs mounted to the back of them. That's the dream, right? 10 cameras. How long until we see a 10 camera smartphone? Very soon. 2022. 21. Uh, yeah, around there. Oppo's working on something different. Well, they're working on everything too, but they're working on something different specifically. We also referenced in the past, but they've now refined it even further. The underscreen front-facing camera, there's a new prototype that was unveiled that refined the technology so that the front-facing camera and the pixels that it occupies were able to shrink even further. We have a device they're showing off with absolutely no ports, no openings, nothing, a slab, a monolith, the future. Very interesting, exciting as far as I'm concerned. You know what's amazing though, Will? When everybody goes this direction, which seems inevitable, you got just a bunch of cameras on the back and a sealed slab. Mm -hmm. What's going to differentiate a phone? N not much. Software. Software, maybe. But even there, when you talk about Android, it's kind of the same deal. Mm-hmm. So I'm not saying I mind. It's it's cool if everybody more people get their hands on this, but we're all we're gonna be carrying around bricks unless the foldable thing takes off. But who really knows where that lines up? I think this is more likely, particularly since on the previous one we were talking about the iPhone giving up on ports, mm. and if Oppo can prove this concept in a commercial uh, product that you don't even have to have the cutout for the front-facing camera, but instead those pixels turn off, well, 
we're going to be looking at a lot of devices that look pretty identical. Oh, yeah. From, from all the manufacturers. So there's some other features that this particular version showed off, this prototype, including 30-watt fast charging. That's not that exciting, a 4,000 milliamp hour battery. Imagine that, 30-watt charging, not that exciting, only because we just talked about 50 on the P40 Pro and because we talked about 100 from Xiaomi on the previous episode. It's out of hand. Mm -hmm. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty wild. Uh, but that's not, that's not exactly what's exciting about this one for me. The phone's power key and volume rocker are designed with pressure sensitivity. No buttons there. The entire body has zero openings or buttons. All right? And then on the front of it, you have full display. And it looks like a symmetrical bezel as well, which has been the hard thing to come by. Mm. Maybe the chin's a bit fatter, but I can't really tell. So it's kind of the dream for people that pay attention to this stuff. Granted, uh, I mean, you've got to be a bit of a pervert in the first place to, be, to need that in your life. Mm -hmm. A symmetrical bezel, aggressive screen to body ratio. Imagine saying this in your spare time. Imagine waking up and saying that in the mirror. <laughs> you wake up in the morning, you have a coffee, you head to the mirror, and those are the words you say to yourself. Aggressive screen to body ratio. That's... I mean, how many times have I said it? <laughs> well, that's the dream, right? Everyone wants this. Yeah, it's science fiction. This is what we're all looking for. We're yeah. looking for the sci-fi future. And you know what's becoming clear to me as these forms become increasingly simple is that the future is for sure minimal. For sure. The, the future is minimal and it's similar and discrepancies are going to be minor in our choices. Even though the Cybertruck, for example, looks striking from a distance, it's way fewer lines. It's only lines where they're necessary mm -hmm. to create the shape to house the... Like, they eliminated so many contours and curves and bodywork that would typically happen on a, on, a, on a car in 2019. And even though their thing looks like the outlier, it's actually more minimal than the alternatives. We're just used to the alternatives, mm -hmm. including their interiors as well, the Tesla interiors. So even though I still have a bit of a soft spot for knobs and dials and kind of steampunky future the blade runner future i don't think so it's not the future no i don't think it is unfortunately i think it's a lot more like this portless slab this monolithic portless slab i think a lot of our things are going going to trend towards the minimalistic and once you start going minimal and peeling things away you end up with forms that can't really be all that different by nature, because those lines and contours aren't available to you, because the demand is not there, because people want the minimal approach and aesthetic. So, anyway, you're gonna you're gonna probably see this tech eventually in every single phone, I would imagine. Mm. I don't see why not. Of course, it's important to note that the pixels that are that are being utilized here to hide the front-facing camera on this device. They're smaller, but you can still see it. And Will's zooming in right now to give you a better idea. You can still see the location of the front-facing camera there. Of course, this, this device is twisted, and you got in the focus point on the camera that took the photo is trying to accentuate where it is. In, in practical usage, you're probably not really going to pick it up other than when you're using the front-facing camera. You're not going to see that it's even there. So I think eventually we see this on every single device. And I can't imagine why it wouldn't be mm -hmm. at some point. Apple is going to be attending CES for the first time in 28 years. Uh, this headline caught my attention, but then the story is kind of a bit of a uh, anti-climatic, uh, climactic. Climato? Anti-climato. It's sort of like a, a, a Bloody Mary yeah. with a celery stock. And a little rim spice. Yeah, you don't get the fixins. You know, there's so there's a popular drink called a Caesar, which only people in Canada really know about because it was invented, I believe, in the Fairmont in Calgary, something like this. And it was a variation on a Bloody Mary. Mm -hmm. And I actually prefer it. Then so, the Bloody Caesar. So, or the Bloody 
The Bloody sure. Mary is the classic version. The Caesar adds something. What does it add to it? Oh. No, 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 no. No, it's not. It's Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. I thought they had that in Bloody Mary. Do they have that in Bloody Mary as well? I don't know what's different then. But it doesn't say that on the ingredients right there. Do Bloody Mary versus Caesar. This is the type of thing you try to order a Caesar outside the country. Yeah, you're right. Tomato and clam juice. Look at that. And Bloody Mary is plain tomato juice. So now people are like, that must be disgusting, but it's not. You just have to actually try it. It's actually not disgusting. Yeah. People like to drink it for breakfast. You add a hot dog on there. And yeah, throw delicious. a hot dog in and have yourself a time. Have yourself a Trouble. good Canadian time. Throw some maple syrup in it while you're at it. I yeah. don't know. Uh, how, did <laughs> how do we get there, man? What? How do we get to that? Oh, uh, clim climatic. climactic, climactic. So we got to Clamato, which brought us there. Anyway, so yeah, it sounds like they're gonna have a presence at CES, but in reality, they're not. They get such a minor presence. Is it gonna be another ad? For sure, they're gonna have ads. Privacy stuff. They love privacy. If they go to CES, it's only to yell at people. <laughs> it's, yeah. How dare you! You're doing it wrong. It's only to go to CES to say how dare you to everyone else in the game. Which, if you're Apple, yeah. You got the American vibe going on. Uh, the, you got the familiar logo. Why not play up the, the privacy aspect? Particularly in Las Vegas, as they did last year. It just, it fits. It's good marketing. Uh, so they're going to send an executive to sit on a panel about privacy. They're gonna, they're gonna, of course, emphasize that they are your your best choice if you are a private individual, and they're just gonna talk about privacy in the industry in general. The uh, the more important thing here for people who are unfamiliar, Apple's just not interested in in participating in the greater uh, segment in that way in a CES type of way. They they were they did at one time, but now they're sort of. They're on their own. They host their own events. In some cases, they actually host events alongside CES to kind of steal some of the thunder. I don't know if that's going to happen this year, but they're going to be there in a very limited fashion. And who knows? They may even have a some Clamato while they're there. Yeah, why not? The executive might wake up in the morning. And you know what? They may request a Caesar, and then the staff at the casino, the hotel, is going to say, what are you talking about? And they're gonna, and then they're gonna have to explain mm -hmm. how to make it, because any mixologist should know the Canadian alteration yeah. on the classic. A little clam juice. I don't know, Worcester man. sauce. Yeah. yeah, mix it up, have a time. So anyway, you, I guess you, if you're at CES, you can go check the panel. I'm not gonna be at CES this year. I haven't been in a, a while myself. I'm like Apple. I'm out for the next 28, mm. and then I come back to talk about. Uh, Privacy. Yeah. I come back to yell at other people in 28 years. China to ditch all Windows PCs by 2022. It's heating up, Will. Why does it got to be like that? Why does it got to heat up like that? Why does it always got to be fisticuffs? Where's the level-headed? Where's the handshake? Where's the I scratch your back, you scratch mine? Couple of, unfortunate. couple of Caesars. Yeah, why not? Sure, why a couple not, of Caesars. Man. Holy Have a good moly. Time. Everybody's so fired up. Everybody's so fired up. Industry. Yeah. Man, jeez. Jeez, man. Working together, cooperation. Don't make me go back to it. We already did it here on this show multiple times. Cooperation, working together. What do you learn that in? Grade two? Yeah. In the sand pit? Did you have one of those in kindergarten, the sand pit? Oh, you yeah. play with the... That was a real privilege when you got to... You got a little time in the sand table. It was mm -hmm. a privilege. The sand table. Remember the table? Yeah. It was, in the, it was right in the class, the sand table. Yes. 
Yeah. Yeah. I always thought sand should be outside. Why is it that stuff makes sense at that age? Yeah. And then everybody loses it, everybody's mad. And then people walk around mad for the next 40 years. <laughs> Just angry. Know. Yeah, I wonder why. I wonder how. how you know, that road rage. It's a road rage. Remember we talked about it on social social media to me is like it's like road rage. In the car, you feel protected by the steel and aluminum and glass around you. All of a sudden, you hate the world because you're strong and powerful in there. The minute you step out and you're vulnerable, you're back inside your meat sack. You say, you're, 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 you're penetrable. You say, you know what? What are we doing? What, what do we got? Weapons here? Yeah. Where do we go? This escalation. Where do we end up? You end up, you go from, I'm angry in my car, to nuclear warfare. Cool. Awesome. Good job. You just blew up the sand pit. And, and meanwhile, we could have both been molding sand right now. <laughs> we could have just worked it out. Yeah. Yeah, how dare you? That's what I'm saying. So anyway, it's unfortunate this China, U.S., Windows... Huawei, Linux, government, trade, uh, agriculture, oil, Trump. Mm. Uh, I don't budge. You don't budge. We're all angry old men. The thing. Now, look, I understand. There's got to be, there's negotiations that take place, but it's not rocket science. There ain't no Einstein in the room. Mm. I guarantee it. This is the type of thing where it's it, it's emotional. It's you have to showcase the ability to compromise, and and it's possible. Mm -hmm. You're not you don't have to solve every single problem that's in there. You just have to showcase a particular ethic, a particular motivation to to be pro, to be progressive collectively for the for the greater good of all parties involved. But that's obviously not what's happening. It's this acceleration of beef, which to me, I don't just don't know how that ends positively. And so as the beef accelerates, China will be ditching all its Windows PC, include like uh, uh, continuing to kind of segment themselves away from any connection to the rest of the world, which just seems like a, eventually it has to be a bad thing. And some people are saying, well, that will be a good thing for Linux because we're talking about, you don't realize when they say they move away from Windows, you're talking about a tremendous number of systems here. I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of, was it 20 million? Is that the, the number that I saw? It's somewhere in here. It was some huge, ridiculous number of systems. 20 to 30 million PCs could end up being replaced. 20 to 30 million PCs. So yeah, open source, Linux, everyone's celebrating. But you know, if China puts that Linux on there, it's not that, it's not, it's no, it's no straight up distro, my friend. That's some, that's some China distro, ladies and gentlemen. That's some heavy hitter type stuff. That's going to be modified to the gills. And so what ends up happening is you continue to have this uh, segmentation of the world's information, of uh, the potential for cooperation. People start playing with different tools in different universes. And it just puts distance between the human beings that are involved in it. And like I said, look, if everything goes the way you want on your side, so if you're uh, Trump or you're in the US and you say, this is how it has to be, then okay, if, if eventually they, 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 comply or agree then then maybe you have a point but if it continues this way just how does it where does it stop i don't know mm -hmm. it could it's just as likely to get ugly as it is to be figured out mm -hmm. and it's a long game i i got a few more le uh, years left over here on on a planet couple at least couple so we'll see what happens but uh they, they could replace 20 to 30 million PCs. And the other speculation is here that if the government services 
replace all their PCs. By the way, this is supposed to be 30% of their Windows PCs by the end of 2020 and a further 50% in 2021 and the final 20% by the end of 2022. So they understand it's going to take some time. But if all of the government PCs move to some alternative OS, some modified version of Linux, there's going to be pressure on the private sector or the sort of private sector in China to, to also follow suit. So that 20 to 30 million PCs, could that number could skyrocket mm -hmm. in that same period of time as the entire group transitions over. And just imagine the infrastructure. It's like through so many years of just using Windows and then a sudden change. Training. Yeah. There's going to be a it's, lag. There's going to be a lag time. Yeah, Microsoft obviously not happy. I don't know what Microsoft's going to do. Bill's got to go talk to Trump now. Just like Ren from Huawei is on the phone to, and it's, yeah. what a mess. Mm -hmm. What a mess happening in the in the sand pit or, or the sand table, which is different. The sand table, what you got to remember, there's also a water table. Mm -hmm. are you, are you actually were allowed to play with the little boats and things like that. And it never went too crazy. You have your odd little dispute. Yeah. But you sort it out because that's what you're supposed to do. Right now, China and America is just have their own sand islands. Oh, they it just, hasn't they just, yet. yeah, they, they yeah. split it. They split it up. Yeah. They split it up. That can't remain like that. I don't know. I don't know. I find it hard to, I don't know. Speaking of China, they just uh, created the first pig monkey chimeras. So how's that for a transition? Mm. How's that for a segue? Uh, me meanwhile, we're worried about Windows PCs. They're like, how about a pig monkey chimera? <laughs> Why not? We're like, I wonder what distro of Linux. They're like, ever, uh, you ever wanted more monkey in your pig? Yeah. yeah. Thought so. You, you want a new pet? Now, apparently there's good reason for this, even though ethically speaking, people are a little, uh, they're worried. They say, monkey, human, human, pig, what's going on here? Well, the idea being, long term, if you can get a pig to accept DNA from other creatures, all, so, all of a sudden, Will, you know what you do? You use that pig to grow human organs. Yeah, 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 that's what you do, Will! Why, uh... Yeah, because you might need an organ someday. <laughs> Why a monkey, though? Because a monkey's too close? close. It's too close. No, no, you want to use close because if you're working towards this potential of getting the human DNA in there, let's see if the monkey works. Uh. Let's see if the chimp works. Let's see if Willie Do works. <laughs> Is it small? Is it too small or... I don't know. I'm just being... I'm really pessimistic about it what's it's, small it's what are you cool. talking about what are you talking is about go the, ahead the engineered pig monkey is it small oh it's the, dead already oh it's all, all of them died oh, almost so. instantly it's not it wasn't a huge success in fact some people are saying uh -huh. like even though it's getting a lot of attention some are saying it's actually discouraging the idea of it happening and working because they all died of course the researchers aren't saying that they're saying hey they lived for a little bit that's pretty cool. And they, are, they were actually saying that the issue had more to do with the artificial insemination or whatever they call that. Oh. What is the word for that? There's a, there's a word specifically for that. But, but they successfully paired them, I guess. They it's, got a small amount of monkey DNA to right. survive, uh, less than 1%, which they consider to be a success. It's difficult to do. Mm. Uh, in total, 4,000 embryos received an injection of monkey cells and were implanted in surrogate sows. The pigs bore 10 pig piglets as a result of the procedure, but only two of the offspring grew both pig and monkey cells. By scanning for spots of fluorescent green, the monkey cells were a specific color. Of course, they're fluorescent green because you start making chimeras. Oh, what color do you reach for? What color do you reach for? You make the video game. Uh... The ooze, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Which color do you reach for? Yeah. Green. <laughs> the team found monkey cells scattered throughout multiple organs, including the heart, liver, spleen, lungs, and skin. 
it was a very low ratio of monkey to pig cells. They even mess around with human pig chimeras once upon a time, but then people got all upset. So what are you doing out there? Ugh. We're not ready for this. They just went right to it. They're like, why are we going to mess with monkeys? Why don't we, just... we got lots of humans going yeah. on. Uh, we got... Okay. <laughs> hey, Pat, can I borrow some of your hair? Yeah. Your DNA? And then, Easy. You know. Done. I don't know if it works like that. I, don't th I think they need stem cells. But anyway. So these ones didn't, didn't survive for very long. The exact reason for the piglet's deaths remain unclear. But, yeah, he thinks it has to do with the in vitro fertilization, IVF. Not artificial insemination. How dare I? I guess that, I don't know. Maybe they're similar. IVF. He doesn't think it has to do with the monkey DNA being inside the piglet. But, yeah, that's what's happening. That's the world we live in. What a time to be alive. Pig monkey chimeras on their way. And think about the type of stuff you worry about on a daily basis. Mm. Think about the type of stuff that you think is really important. And, and stressful. And then I just want you to visualize the pig monkey chimera. All right? Just picture that and then say to yourself, man, my stuff is kind of minor because the pig monkey chimeras are coming. Yeah. And I have no idea what 2037 looks like. So the fact that the guy butted me in line or the fact that they ran out of my favorite uh, uh, lunch meat <laughs> at the supermarket. Just remember in 2030, your <laughs> stomach is going to be replaced by a... Yeah, I don't... Look, man, it's, it, we make fun of it and laugh about it, but imagine you needed a liver or a kidney. And and they and they could pump them out, and you could just buy one because yeah. it was growing inside of a pig. Ethically speaking, I get it. There's about a billion questions that come with it. What does that pig's life look like? Yeah. He's he just got 14 kidneys, human kidneys, growing on the outside of his body. It's some real Matrix vibe. But uh, let me tell you something. When you need it, Willie, do all of a sudden you need that kidney? Yeah. Guess what? I'm paying. It's on me. Good. It might have some pig in it, but it's on me. Here's a cool one, innovative. I, I can't see why anyone would be mad at this one. We have a rubber band solution that could reduce plastic bottle waste by 80%. Mm. A French-Israeli entrepreneur believes that recycling challenges posed by large quantities of plastic bottles could be significantly, look at that word, ameliorated with a rubber band. So he developed a bottle, an idea for a bottle that has a rubber band on it, which enables you to crush the plastic bottle really easily on your own. And what this would do is significantly trim down the volume of overall recycling that you have. So there's been an argument recently that recycling is actually not that efficient. And in many cases, these giant trucks driving around to pick up the stuff and then the gases that, 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 that they're spewing out and the fuel that it takes and the manpower and that it's actually not all that effective. Uh, particularly with certain materials like plastic, L less so for other stuff like glass and paper. Uh, and there's an argument. Now, if you could trim down the volume, the actual size of the majority of recycling, which obviously plastic bottles take up a big portion of it, all of a sudden the math changes because for every trip that that vehicle has to take to pick up the recycling, the amount that it can fit per trip goes way down. It's carrying a lot of air, essentially, mm -hmm. as it drives around with these giant uh, bottles that are probably too stiff and, and mm -hmm. are never... You ever take a bottle, Will, and you just, you just push it down? Have you ever done that before? You just... Yeah. You can push it. It can get small. And then you could seal it. And you could seal it. So you just push the air out of it and you seal it and it takes up way less space. Maybe one quarter the space? Something like that? Mm -hmm. So he wants to make that easier and almost... Uh, like an automatic thing that people do and assume you would do with a bottle. According to the Ellen MacArthur Foundation, there could be more plastic than fish by weight in the ocean by 2050 mm -hmm. if current plastic disposal trends continue. 
In fact, only 14% of the world's masses uh, of plastic packaging materials is collected for recycling. So most of it, you know, it ends up in other places because it's not feasible to collect it all. It's just so much volume. So this rubber band situation, uh, where is it here? Key to the uncomplicated solution is a biodegradable rubber band. So I knew people were going to have that question. What happens to the rubber band? The rubber band itself is biodegradable. It's strapped around a particular part of the bottle, which assists consumers to easily fold their empty bottle and reduce its volume by 80%. So you can see how that works right there. There's a slight little demo. 80% reduction. So now more of it can get collected and dealt with. The, these type of solutions, Will, where it's like really not that fancy and it seems... Why did nobody do that before? Uh, it doesn't, no one has to change their behavior, really. You're not call, You're not telling anyone they're evil. Yeah. You're just saying, oh, here's a cool way to just reduce the volume of recycling by 80%. And it doesn't taste, it doesn't change the taste of your sugary drink. Yeah, it doesn't change, change your drink at all. Are they going to be attached to the bottle? Apparently, yeah. I, I think what you're looking at there is just sort of a crude demonstration of what of what they're actually hoping will take place. But yeah, the idea being is to make it a more comfortable task to get your bottle down to its minimal size to increase the effectiveness of the entire recycling infrastructure. So we'll see if it actually rolls out. It would have to be somewhat cost effective, but you can imagine the Coca-Colas of the world, creating marketing a marketing campaign around that idea. Because now they can say, look, you don't have to feel so guilty with you know, using, using these bottles and whatever else. And of course, Coca-Cola sells more than Coke. They got water and, and everything else. Mm. This one you sent to me, but man, I saw it all over the internet, this $120,000 banana. Uh, and then the guy eats the banana. So there's a banana on a wall at an art gallery. And it is the art installation. A banana with some duct tape sticking it to the wall. It was listed at $120,000. And then another artist comes and eats the banana. That's sort of the most simple version of the story. But at first, people were confused because they were saying, well, well, first off, how do you spend $120,000 on a banana? Because, well, you know what happens to a banana. Well, if you've ever left a banana yeah. out, have you ever left a banana out, Will? Mm -hmm. What happens to it? Just turns all mushy and brown. It just it just goes away fast. Yeah, a banana goes away fast. It it degrades quickly. So initially, though, that was a question: How? What is this crazy? Do you have too much money? What's going on here? Apparently, and this is news to me, having read the article. The reason none of this matters is because those who purchased the banana installation actually got a certificate of authenticity stating that within their own private gallery, their private collection, they could display and replace this banana with any banana and still claim that it's the banana. That's, that was the stipulation on the certificate of authenticity. Talk about being in the weeds. They know and you know that they paid the money to the artist with the original idea, but you will never be looking at the original banana and you're okay with that and the purchaser is okay with that. And obviously the guy eating the banana is okay with that because it looks to be a delicious banana. So that th there's your breakdown of the $120,000 controversial banana. Is there like a statement made for what this should mean? Well, the guy eating it, his, which is art as well, by the way, in case, because yes. yes. in case you See, were confused about that. Filming. His installation, which is eating the banana, that was called Hungry Artist because it's the starving artist concept. You're, you're an artist. You're in an art gallery. You're probably hungry. It's an art performance. So you just have the banana. But as far as the banana in the first place, I don't know what the message was there. Probably something to do, I can just guess, probably something to do with the finite nature of life in general. Nothing lasts forever, including banana installation. You know, I don't know. I'm just going to duct tape it on the wall. Yeah, I don't know, Will. I don't know. You never know where this stuff goes. Yeah. But that's your breakdown. That's the basics. That's mostly what you need to know. 
if you want to buy one of these yourself, I don't know how many certificates are available. You can buy a certificate for $120,000 that lets you tape a banana to the wall. Officially lets you. Because don't you dare go do it on your own. No. Don't you dare tape a banana to the wall because yeah. you're a copycat. Yeah. <laughs> How dare you? Again, uh. you know, I don't know. Anyway, there it is. Uh, we said it all. We said absolutely everything today. There's nothing more to say. Well, the shout out to the wallpaper guys. We got a new wallpaper. Got a few of them. Oh, okay. Go ahead, Will. Take it over. It's all I mean, you. uh, you've probably seen it with Santa Lou in the background. Uh, shout out to Fotis and uh, Pat Johnson, who did this one right here. Pretty cool. Very cool. And uh, if you have any new submissions, if you want to create art um, for the background, it's uh, will at lulater.com. The resolution is 12,800 by 3,200. And you know what? While, while Will is shouting people out, I would like to just shout everyone out. If you're here... Right now, you chose to be in this location on planet Earth, at least through video, with your eyeballs mm -hmm. and your screen. If you chose to be here, then we appreciate that. 